I'm glad you could join me in my kitchen. This is one of my favorite food holidays, St. Patrick's Day. A good excuse to get a really good corned beef brisket, get some cabbage, potatoes, onions, and carrots, and make a one-pot wonder. I'm Diane. I want to show you an easy way to make this that's going to come out very flavorful and very moist and it's really easy. So let's get started. What you want to have to cook this is a nice heavy pot, cast iron, Dutch oven, something like that. It needs to be kind of heavy so that the brisket will cook evenly and the lid will stay on and the steam stays in to keep it nice and moist. And you want to maintain this at a simmer. You can either do this stove top or you can put it in your oven in about a 325 degree oven. Uh, the particular piece that I have is a three pound piece and I did cook it for about three hours because I like corned beef nice and tender. And when you're picking out your piece of corned beef, you want to add about 35% to 40% to the weight of however much you want to have to serve. In other words, if you're serving two people, I pick something out that's probably a pound and a half to two pounds because that will give you one leftovers and in the cook process it will shrink 35 to 40%, but leftovers are really where it's at. So. After the corned beef, carriage, potatoes, and onions, did I say cabbage? Cabbage, of course. Then the next day, you can have Reuben's, and after that, then you can have some corned beef hash, and it's all really good. So, let's get busy in the kitchen, and I'll show you how I do it. Now, first of all, what you want to do into the pot is going to go this wonderful corned beef brisket that you bought. Make sure you buy it with fat and make sure you don't buy the low sodium ones. This is a piece that I picked up at Costco. It was really good and it's a company out of Montana and there wasn't a lot of brine which is good too. And there's also a company called Cy Ginsburg. They're up in Detroit. They have wonderful brisket if you're around Northwest West Ohio. And also Meyer has good brisket. But it's going to come out of the package. And then it's going to go to the pot that's just big enough to hold the brisket and the vegetables. Because the ve vegetables have to fit in there after the brisket's done but undo the seasoning packet put it over put the seasoning packet over the brisket and you're going to put the brisket in the pot fat side up cuz that'll act as a nice little baster then to this particular piece it's like i say a 3 pound piece i added about a quart and a half of water you don't want to add too much water because you don't want to dilute the flavor of the seasonings just enough to cover the brisket by a half inch that's it the trick is making sure that you have a nice tight seal on the lid. You can check to see if the brisket's done by bending it back a little bit or taking the edge of a knife and cutting off just the corner of it. And it will cut really easy when it's done. And then when it's done, you're going to take it out of the pot and put it aside to cool because what you're going to do is then put your vegetables in, the cabbage that you've cleaned and quartered, leaving the stem end in so the cabbage stays together. Put peeled potatoes in the bottom. I used russets. You could use red skins too. And then peeled carrots. I'm not wild about those little tiny carrots that are exactly the same size. Get a carrot, you'll be much happier. I cut them so that they'd fit in the pot because they were rather long. And then I had some onions that I quartered and put in the pot too, leaving that little bit of a root stem on as well so they kind of stay together. But layer them in that manner, cabbage, potatoes on the bottom, carrots on the top, so that they cook nice and even. And you're going to cook 
the vegetables for about 20 minutes to a half hour depending on the size of the vegetables that you're cooking and you'll have to test those I would test them in 20 minutes to see if they're done just stick a little knife in see if they're tender or not then when they're done you're going to pull them out to something that can go to the refrigerator or cool down I suppose if you wanted to eat it the same night then put them right onto your serving piece but I do like to let that corned beef brisket cool in its own liquid so that one it cuts easier and two it maintains um, the moisture a nice moisture so you don't have dried up brisket anyway carefully take the vegetables out of the pot into whatever you want to put them in oven to table is always nice though mine's not I just put them in that to put them into the refrigerator cabbage will stay together easily when it comes to the potatoes and the carrots you might take uh, you might get yourself a spoon and a pair of tongs to help lift them out and I like to put the pan on the side of the pot so you're not reaching over um, with the carrots that will probably could fall apart depends on how far you cook them anyway take them all out leaving the juice in the pan because this is what you want to cool the brisket in and put them in your either serving piece or the piece that's going to go to the refrigerator nice and neat so that they will come out easily you don't want to just throw them in there otherwise they could fall apart and look really ugly and it is about presentation so the brisket goes back in then I cooled mine down and the next day you'll see this layer of fat that has floated to the top and you take all the fat out take the brisket out of the liquid I put it onto the cutting board that has a piece of waxed paper on it or parchment paper slicing and cleaning up the mess is a lot easier if it's on a piece of paper anyway take the little pieces of fat off it if it, some have stuck to it and I left some of the I cut a piece off so you could easily see how the grain runs on the meat because you want to cut this cross grain and by that I mean cut across it if you are wondering if you can't really see it because of the fat turn the brisket upside down and you'll be able to see very easy which way the grain is running and make sure that the knife goes exactly the opposite way otherwise it's just a stringy chewy mess cross grains the way to go so after you figure out which way that and that's kind of an important step then just get a knife and cut off however large a piece you want to serve probably a nice half inch piece and you're probably going to find that the brisket it's not going to be you're not going to cut it as a square you're going to cut it uh, as it's going to look like a triangle on the cutting board but anyway a nice half inch piece I like to leave the fat on it when I rewarm it so that that adds moisture and it's self base as well and then we're also going to add the cooking liquid to rewarm it to the depth of about a half inch in the serving piece and that is going to let this steam again ever so slightly but if you cut this while it's cold you get a really nice presentation out of it and it's easier to cut if you want to make sandwiches whatever you want to do it's just the whole process is a lot easier and it's more flavorful if you let it go overnight anyway so there you have it it's in its little serving piece the cabbage potatoes and carrots and the onions I put a little parsley on it just so you could see what it was going to look like when it comes out but what you want to do is cover this with a piece of foil 
or if you happen to have a lid on your serving piece nice and tight it needs to be nice and tight to keep the moisture in you can also if you want to warm this there's two ways of warming it in a 400 oven for about 20 minutes to oh up to a half hour or so providing the seal is nice and tight or you can put it in a 300 oven and if you put it in a 300 oven and you happen to have some heavy duty saran wrap you know plastic film wrap you can also cover with that too but foil works well it's just a little tricky to get a nice tight seal on it so play with that and then off to the oven it goes and when it comes out look what you have doesn't this look wonderful a wonderful brisket served with some horseradish some mustard on the side of a little shamrock plant that you can buy pretty easily right now that can be your centerpiece and it's really good make some soda bread because that's fast and easy and you too can transport yourself to Ireland without even leaving your zip code so I hope you enjoyed that video and if so leave comments I do read them and subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends because maybe somebody else will want to learn how to cook this is really easy thanks for joining me and see you on the next episode <music>